Welcome to Quant Minds International here in Vienna. I'm Joanna Simpson. Joining me now is Julien Guillon, Senior Quant at Bloomberg. Thank you very much for joining me today. Thank you, Joanna. Uh, how have option pricing methods developed over the years? Well, a big change has been observed since uh, 2008 and the big financial crisis that we all know. And so um, the option pricing models have um, uh, taken the non-linear uh, turn. Um, many of the aspects of uh, option pricing that were considered like secondary and not so important are only, you know, um, modifying the prices by just tiny bips. Uh, I have actually um, became very important, in particular, for instance, the, you know, the uh, credit valuation adjustment or capital valuation adjustment, initial margins, all that was considered like very not important. And um, one thing is that all this is actually described by nonlinear equations in finance. So that means that the pricing, so what we call partial differential equation, the, that's the equation that uh, uh, gives the, 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 the solution to the option pricing problem, are now nonlinear. Nonlinear meaning basically that the, uh, the output is not just proportional to the cause, but behaves in a more complicated way, like the square or another power of it. And, um, and this ha uh, has led um, Quant to develop new numerical methods to tackle those uh, nonlinear equations that are more complicated to solve, uh, in particular in large dimension, which is uh, typical in quant finance like that. We have to uh, work in, um, in large dimensions. And that's why developing um, simulation-based methods, or what we call Monte Carlo methods, um, that adapt to the nonlinear case has been a very important trend, trend in the last, uh, let's say, yeah, 10, 10 years now. And so what are today's challenges in options pricing? So in option pricing today, so we're still like, like trying to develop those Monte Carlo methods for like nonlinear uh, uh, PDs. Um, there are also like challenges that are more linked to the model itself, uh, meaning that it's not so much about the numerical method that you will use to produce, you know, not only the prices, but also the hedge ratios and uh, what we call the risk analysis for just risk management. Um, but it's also about what, what is the right model uh, that correctly describes the way uh, the different assets and the volatilities behave. And in that respect, I think that uh, one of the big challenges today is to incorporate what we call path dependency, for instance, in, if you just think of one asset and its volatility, uh, it's just about the fact that the volatility uh, depends on how the markets have behaved in the past, I don't know, two weeks, four weeks, and it not just depends on the value. So if you think, for instance, of the VIX, okay, that's the volatility index for the S&P, um, clearly it's not just a function of the S&P itself, uh, but it depends on how the S&P has evolved. Like the way I like to convince people about path dependent volatility is, I say, okay, what is your guess of the VIX in one year if the S&P is at, let's say, 4,000, which will be 1,000 more points than today. So, okay, if people may say, okay, if the S&P is 4,000, that means that the market have been up. Usually when the markets are up, the volatility is quite quiet, okay, so quite low. And so they would say, okay, so the VIX will be quite low. But then I say, okay, if now I tell you that in one year minus two weeks, the S&P is say 4,500, so that would have mean I tell you that the S&P would have go down uh, from 4,500 to uh, 4,000 in just two weeks. So there are probably times of crisis of turmoil. And actually we know that in, in those periods, the VIX uh, shoots up. And so that's just to tell you that you cannot actually just, that, 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 that the, the volatility is really a function on, of, on how the, the, the markets have evolved in, in, in usually the recent past, that can be maybe a few weeks to a few months. And uh, that is quite clear. I think that's really how the traders and the markets behave, but it's actually quite difficult to incorporate this in the uh, equation. So it's, it's, so because even the simplest options, which are we call the vanilla options, then the prices of those options be, become a complicated object because it, it itself becomes path dependent. And uh, that's a, quite of a big uh, challenge, I think, for, the, for, for, t for today's uh, option pricing. And though it's difficult to predict, how do you see things developing in the future? Um, so 
I think that in terms of option pricing, especially on, uh, let's say, the uh, equity derivative side, which I'm more familiar with, um, one of the big, big challenges is to uh, understand jointly the dynamics of an underlying, an asset like the S&P, for instance, and uh, its volatility at the same time, because we have now markets where we have liquid, uh, liquidly traded options on the asset itself and on its volatility. So that means that actually the market gives us a lot of information about uh, the, uh, what we call in, in mathematics the, 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 the risk neutral distributions of the underlying and the volatility. So basically what is the probability that the S&P will be within a certain range in the future and at the same time the probability that its volatility or for instance the VIX will range in another, will uh, be in another range uh, of values and um, doing building a model that is able to uh, fit the market data both on the underlying and the volatility at the same time is something that is known to be very challenging, very far from being trivial. Uh, so I've worked like quite a lot in the past uh, two years on it and I'm happy to present here at, uh, at Quant Minds uh, this year. Um, especially a talk that I've uh, titled like the, 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 the joint S&P VIX uh, smile calibration puzzle solved because it's actually quite a big challenge and an open questions uh, you know, yeah, that is here for, that's been here for like 13 years since actually VIX uh, options started trading. And uh, happy to present what I believe is like the, the first solution so far to the exact calibration, but it's still, you know, it's still ongoing. I'm, I'm not saying that this, this is, perfect and that's the end of things. I think it will develop a lot in the, in the, in the next years, I hope. And I think it's, it's something that, that is important to, uh, to, to, to be able to consistently, uh, you know, price and risk manage a portfolio that not only has uh, derivatives on a security, but also on its volatility. It will be interesting to hear how that develops. Julien Guion, thank you very much for your time. Thank you so much.